Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello, Merry Christmas, and welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Now, of course, it was 12 months ago to the day that I took delivery of my McLaren Senna, unwrapping the Christmas present at the McLaren Technology Center, the factory in Woking. And that was only two days after collecting the Ford GT. And what a year it has been. It flew by, but of course, for the last six months, the Senna has been off the road. However, today it is time to go and drive it. Fortunately, for once, the weather outside outside is not frightful and having not been behind the wheel other than a very very short little stretch today i'm going to take it out of town and go and have some fun and be reminded what the senna is all about for a christmas drive With the rarity of some nice weather outside, but not quite enough time to take out more than one, I'd shortlisted it down to these two to drive today, the Senna and the GTR Pro, both of which we collected in the last week or two, actually, with the trailer behind my G63, joined by Tony from Turbo Transport, but neither that have really been driven ever in the case of the Pro, and certainly not recently in the case of the Senna. Now, this will be having some big adventures during 2020. I'm a little bit embarrassed at the moment that it's only done 45 miles in about 10 days that I've owned it. It, which if you know my garage and in particular the last car I collected which was my new Toyota GR Supra A90 edition I think in about three days that car had done something like one and a half thousand miles so 45 in 10 days for me is a little bit unusual anyway this is going to have many outings to the racetracks and beyond around Europe during the next year the Senna of course had its first year of service a little bit cut short when in the summer back in early July it didn't quite make it down to the Goodwood Festival of Speed which meant I haven't been able to use it as intended during the later half of the year, but today we will take it out. Next year is going to be mega. It did, however, mean I spent a lot of time with the Ford GT over in the USA. That car I absolutely love, but I think we can call this probably the flagship of the collection, certainly in performance terms, also in value terms. This thing is brutality in the maximum. And today, well, we're gonna take it out for a little drive. I've uncovered it, already plugged, or unplugged, I should say, the trickle charger. We will hop on board though, get this started up. In fact, let me come through and just do this right now so that we can take the car out because, well, it is long overdue a proper drive. Now, I did do a few miles the other day. You can see from the water drops here, just to take it out for some photos around London, taking it easy, taking it gently. Today, though, we will go and find some countryside. Now, climbing into the Senna is never pretty at the best of times. It is a very awkward car to get into with the Senna bucket seats that you have here. But let me just see if I can make my way inside. Obviously, we have the button up on the roof to get it started. So one press for the ignition. Let's bring this quickly into light life. Oh yes, the feeling of power. So I'll give it a second, we'll head on out then, we're going to have some fun driving in this car, a long over to you, first drive back in the Senna. I tell you what I hadn't forgotten is that driving this car in central London, it is rough. It is firm, it is noisy, it is loud, and I also need to remember to basically be shouting at the cameras because there is no other road car that has this little sound deadening. This is the only car that I think has the rattles like a race car on the road. You feel like you're in something that makes no sense. The wing is so high out the back that you don't even see it in your rear view mirror, and it feels like the most insane thing to actually be driving on normal tarmac. And at the moment, I'm in complete automatic, normal, normal comfort. We've got some funny noises because we've got the harnesses in at the moment. I say they're in, they're not actually in the seats. They're kind of tucked down the back, which means they rattle against the bulkhead. Okay. I just need to shuffle them around a little bit and, and move them so that we don't get that at certain RPMs. Stop start, as bizarre as that actually is. I can press active on the central screen. I've got it set to have sport mode uh, on the powertrain, still with normal on the handling. So normal soft suspension, um, we'll play with that a little bit later. But honestly, to be back behind the wheel of this car, I, it's crazy. It feels like a new car. It feels, do you know what? This might sound strange, but I drive so many different cars, including press cars, friends' cars, cars from collections, manufacturers, dealerships, you name it. It doesn't actually feel real that this is my car again. It hasn't quite sunk in. This is like Christmas present round two, but without the unwrapping, of course. Um, I think when you're in sport mode, it doesn't automatically stop the engine. It would need to be in comfort when you come to a stop to do that. Obviously, when you then go into track, the screen flips down, you get the whole fanfare, everything that it's doing, showing you that which doesn't really do much, but it looks really, really cool. Just like having the glass on the doors, um, but we're gonna get back into, I think back into normal sport mode. Policeman tucks past there. But um, yeah, being back in this car is absolutely ridiculous. 
and I know how noisy it's going to get as well. When we get out of town, we get to some countryside roads. In fact, I'm going to take it to a place that I went with my friend Sam Moores when we took out this car and also my Ford GT together and kind of drove them back to back just outside of London, countryside roads, places where we can put the foot down a little bit and actually enjoy it and have some of the experience. It's so raw and visceral. You think a car like the 675 or the Ford GT is raw and visceral, and then you get in this, and honestly I'm speaking so loudly because I know how loud it is inside this car. So, a couple of miles, we'll get out of town, maybe a bit of motorway, go find somewhere fun. Driving this car on the motorway is the most insane amount of pressure. Every single car, the driver is just fixated on this thing, which of course means that they are not looking exactly where they are going, and you need to drive incredibly defensively. And yes, I did know this, I've driven this thing enough times in general environments but it's still a little bit of a surprise and it's still very very noisy it is not a comfortable motorway driving experience and the radio the sound system the speakers even though I have the Bowers and Wilkins system the thing is even though I'm sure they're making great quality audio and yes even in here you do listen to the radio or to music or whatever but with the number of rattles and noises and kind of echoes of the carbon fiber around the top you just don't really hear it <laughs> <laughs> the feel is crazy. The brake pedal is one of the strange things because it takes a lot of pedal pressure. Um, it's active, I guess, as soon as you're on the pedal and there's not very much travel. So when you're pushing down, you have to really, really kind of stamp into the brake pedal. Anyway, this thing <laughs> with its gigantic rear wing. And the other thing is if you want to open the windows, you have to remember that it's up there and then you have to remember which way around to do it because it's slightly unintuitive, we can say. Anywho, we're not too far from where I'm heading. Been going around the M25 a little bit. Where, of course, the incident actually happened. Not too far from where we are right now, really. Not too far at all, but we're not going to drive that exact stretch. Uh, anyway, uh, nice slow Prius right in front. Come on, sir. Getting out into a 70 mile an hour speed limit. We'd like to accelerate now. Enjoy some of what this car can do, but alas, that doesn't look like it's about to happen. traction fully on, of course. Um, I'm not taking any chances. It's 11 degrees, it says. I guess it must be. I've got no reason to disbelieve it. 11 degrees Celsius, but uh, still not going to go into dynamic mode or anything crazy yet. Just get reacquainted with the car before uh, we start doing anything silly. Now, these are more my kind of roads. Out in the countryside, some bumpier tarmac, but let's pop it into sport mode. The hydraulic suspension just adjusts slightly. You hear all of the noises from the outside, so now we're in sport. Foot down, let's feel some of the power. And my word, this car is ballistic. It is so quick and so loud and dramatic. It doesn't feel right to be driving this on the road in the slightest. Of course, this is in sport mode. You can press the ESC dynamic button. One tap of the ESC puts it into dynamic. But it's basically the way the McLaren's are set up, and this started back with a 675 LT, is that because of how much power they have and how light they are, it's a slightly dangerous combination if you don't keep the wits about you. Dynamic, you get all of it, and it is just absurd. Acceleration for all of about two seconds, and you're very quickly into big numbers. Wow, this is mental. We've got a Christmas tree in front of us here at the roundabout. I love this little loop. We've got some really nice roads, some that are bumpier than others. Like this, just wasted in central London. I did a short little drive around the city streets, but out here, this is massively. <laughs> Start to be aware that it is a little bit greasy. Nine degrees now on the thermometer in front of me. Very, very bumpy. It's just insane how crazy the feeling of being inside here is. Of course, what you're looking at, the wing mirrors are literally hanging out on the wings. I mean, they're attached to that pylon on the side of the door, but they're so far out, there's kind of a gap between you and those. The rear visibility, you've got a great view, actually, of the engine straight in the mirror. You can't see the spoiler, like I said, that's sitting above that rear view. You can just see the end plates. And of course, it does kind of things like we saw when I did the shakedown. When you accelerate hard, it goes flat. When you put your foot hard on the brakes, it goes up as an active air brake. This car is kind of clever tech from the ground up. There's also active air at the front, the way it opens different sides and those move around those flaps actually move around now we're going to turn on to a pretty bumpy and rough road not the right place really to be driving a car like this i think at all but let's head this way see if we can make this tight turn yeah we can just 
Alright, so... is officially mental. What a crazy, crazy car to drive on the road. And like I said, so different in its style to driving in the Ford GT. And I've done a few thousand miles in the GT since the last time I drove this, and I had forgotten quite how different they actually are. I think the only other road-going track-focused supercar, which is the same kind of style as this, is the Porsche GT2 RS, which I've driven a few times recently as well. But there's still quite a gulf between them in terms of the price. This is about triple the price of the GT2 RS, but also in terms of its statistics as well it's 100 horsepower more it's a few hundred kilos lighter it has even more downforce it has active aero this is kind of in a league of its own i think until the aston martin valkyrie and the mercedes amg1 arrive on the scene which then take the game up even more because they cost about triple the price of this but the driving experience getting behind the wheel of this thing is so much in a different stratosphere in terms of rawness 
and ferocity that it's really hard to actually try and compare it to anything else. And I had forgotten how dramatic it is. You need to have your wits about you. To jump in and drive the Senna, you need to be thinking what you're doing. Anyway, I've also come out of town, I can't remember if I said, to go and visit a potential storage location. I'm primarily looking inside London, but I'm taking in options outside as well. So I'm gonna go and visit them quickly too, but off camera, because of course it is a private location, uh, certainly before I have a contract and any part of it becomes mine. But the Senna today, I mean, just look at it. Just look at this thing from the back. Look at its picnic table that it has. And obviously I have the spare original wing. This is the new wing. Uh, this is the new fender, new door, uh, new rear wheel, pretty small parts technically at the end of the day. But this thing just looks insane. And from here, from here, for example, look at that. Look at what's going on up here. It's ridiculous. Anyway, let's step back inside. We will continue this short little drive then to head over to my next stop. I'm um, some miles away from where I am at the moment. Screen folds out, start it up, the panel up here. And uh, yeah, head onwards from here. Back on the motorways then, heading back in towards central London. We've got a bit of traffic, congestion, roadworks, the usual kind of thing. So I've had my visits, check out this unit. I'm unsure, undecided, a few things I need to think about and some more questions I need to ask. But of course, keeping me busy, trying to work out what we're going to do into 2020 as a storage, a museum, a man cave, however we want to call it, to get all of this set up. And to be honest, I'm very excited. Thanks to all of you who have messaged, Instagram DM'd, and sent emails with ideas or specific things that might work out. I'm definitely trying to put this together as the year comes. I can't tell you too much. I'm trying hard not to reveal more than I can do at this stage about certain things. But definitely, this is, I guess, the next plan for me, the next thing that I want to work out and make happen. Uh, just these average speed limits where you have to go 50 miles an hour. Apart from that guy, everyone basically going exactly the same speed means you end up with people in your blind spots and just super, super sketchy and cautious just to make sure that nothing goes wrong, especially given the misfortune of the past. Anyway, it's been amazing driving this car. I'm going to head back in. I think I'm going to stop at one of the services just to pop in and have a quick break and stop. There's something sitting right on my shoulder. I'm super anxious about it. Anyway, just to have a quick, uh, a quick catch up for a minute and then back towards towards the storage uh, with the Senna. Back at home then, in the storage, parked back up. I need to plug the car into its trickle charger, pop it under the cover. In fact, I might come and do the trickle charger very quickly right now, which in this car, you might remember, is underneath this nose bridge, which is notoriously hard to open. Of course, normally it's secured down. This is all part of the aero, actually, if you weren't quite aware of why I had that. Obviously, you have these gurney flaps on each side, which flick the air up so that you can escape the hot air out of the radiators quicker. That central section is kept smooth so that you get clean air going over the top towards the cooling that goes there inside the roof scoop, the roof snorkel. So this is about keeping cool air over the top rather than having the hot air that comes out of the radiators going straight into that. Quite clever when you start to think about it. So what you've got to do with this is about a third of the way down and a third of the way in from the left. Let's see if I can get this first go. Give it a press, nope. Ah, maybe because the car is locked. That wouldn't help. The lock system, grab the key, got it right here. Just make sure that is unlocked. Then with this, there we go. Open that up. Needs a bit of a clean in here, actually. That is uh, not the best. Um, and it plugs in the trickle charger just to that. So here inside the car, we have it. I took it with me just in case I ended up going somewhere else. We've just got this nice and easy. So we can get that out, plug it in. And yes, I have a cerulean blue extension lead that plugs into the front. I'll probably do that off video because it's a little bit challenging to do one-handed and our soft closed doors. And yeah, looks a little bit funny when that's open. A very lightweight, unusual piece of carbon fiber with the tiniest of brackets to actually hold it into place anyway today's drive taking out the center what felt like a first drive i'm not gonna lie a crazy experience at the wheel of this thing it is really and truly one of the most extreme driving experiences that you can have out on the road somehow that car has number plates but as they said it is not sanitized necessarily to be used with them of course this has done pure mclaren at spa it's done the nurburgring nordschleife and it will do plenty more through next year and i cannot wait so i'd like to say thanks again for watching thank you for all of your support this year a very merry christmas to all of you wherever you may be in the world but that is it for today thank you very much for watching and i'll see you again very soon cheers